In this episode, I'm leaving Llangollen and wistfully making my way to Hurlston, taking in the highlights of this remarkable canal. I sit down and reflect about what is good and what is not so good about the Llangollen and I've also edited together a sequence of the best bits of my summer on the Llangollen. I took an early doors exit from Llangollen Basin following several other boats through the narrows. No oncoming boats at this time of the morning. The remains of Llangollen Castle overlook the valley. The early sun had been replaced by high cloud as we continued to travel above the River Dee. And I moored for the night by Bridge 35 West, with Kevin Mower visible in the evening sun in the distance. The rising sun caught the early morning dew on the side of the boat and low cloud clung to the hilltops. The morning exodus from Llangollen went by. And time I was on my way too. A final crossing of the Pont Casilchte. Despite crossing it about 12 times, I'm still quite awestruck by it. The processed wood factory in Chirk is almost identical to the one in the Northumbrian town of Hexham. Same noises, same smells. I wasn't sure what this guy was up to. Clearly there was a boat already in the tunnel. When I pulled over and had a look, we couldn't see the oncoming boat and thought the other guy had possibly reversed out of the tunnel. So we followed this guy in, only to find a bit of a standoff going on. So all three boats had to reverse out. On a previous trip through the tunnel, I'd spotted this ventilation shaft. There really is something quite special about this border crossing. Final impressions of the wonderment of Chirk Aqueduct and Viaducts. Absolutely glorious. And back in dear old Blighty. Now. This is Owen. Remember him with the waving bear on his boat? Well, he's just fitted an outboard to his canoe. It clearly wasn't fast enough. Go, Owen. How's it going then, Owen? Working all right? Going well, Andrew, yeah. Good man. Yeah. Just catching you on film there, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to get a better battery. I'm going to get it now. Hello. Are you okay? Now, this blocked ventilation shaft was worth a further look, I thought. 
Yep, that's it. I'm not sure what I was expecting, but I was somewhat underwhelmed. A few days later, and an autumn sunrise mists the water. I can think of few places I'd rather be on mornings like this. Even filling with water can provide moments of beauty on the canals. Bit of a sombre mood this lunchtime. Uh, this morning as I was cruising along, um, there was a bit of an incident between Povey's Lock and Willymoor Lock. Now, apparently, um, a man had uh, had a heart attack and gone into the canal. Uh, the air ambulance had arrived and were trying to resuscitate him, uh, but unfortunately this wasn't successful. Uh, now, I'd arrived well after this incident, um, and the police were there taking statements from people and there was a very distraught looking woman on the towpath and uh, you know my com commiserations to, to um, all the family involved really uh, just goes to show that you know the, uh, the canals uh, are, you know we romanticize about them and it's a place, place of peace and tranquility but just sometimes um, unfortunate things happen and um, I mean, you know, this is the second fatality on this canal in the three months that I've been here. Um, so just a bit of a sobering thought, really. No howling. I was treated to this stunning autumn moonrise. Wow. The following day was dreek, as they would say in Scotland, and now, travelling alone, it was time to head further east. back here at this beautiful mooring. This is the mooring where I spent my first night on the Frangotten, where I filmed the thunderstorm from and it has to be one of my favourite moorings now. At the moment um, the temperature is a lot different from it, how it was three months ago. Uh, the leaves are beginning to turn and um, as you can see there are several boats behind me which um, there weren't when I was first here so it's an awful lot busier. I've now spent three months on this canal and um, it's with some sadness that uh, I'm going to be leaving it. Uh, it has been an absolute privilege to spend as long as I have here. Um, I'm only, you know, I'm a bit sad for those people who come on holiday here and can only spend a week or two. But anyway, what are my thoughts on this canal and its various branches? It is little wonder that this is probably the most touristy canal on the network. It is blessed by some dramatic and varied scenery, unsurpassed canal innovation and infrastructure. It's just a delight. As you travel west, you go through one of the largest bogs in Britain. You go through the beautifully wooded Shropshire Lake District. Um, and then, of course, you come across those fantastic aqueducts, 
But it doesn't stop there, because from there you head from Trevel along to Flangotten, along a most astonishingly beautiful stretch of canal and wonderful, wonderful scenery. This canal just keeps giving and giving and giving. And of course there are some beautiful rural branches and arms that come off the main line of the canal. And we'll be looking at uh, the Prees branch and the Montgomery Canal um, in future episodes. And we'll also have a quick look at the history of Trevor Basin. Because the canal is fed by the River Dee, the water is beautifully clear in places. It is just, even when boats have gone past, you would expect them to stir up all the silt from the bottom. But in some cases, especially sort of the closer you are to Flangotten itself, the water, you can, st you can still see the bottom of the canal even when boats have gone past. It's fantastic. And of course, for history buffs like myself, the canal has an absolutely outstanding history. Uh, there's so much to discover uh, about how the canal was built and um, just some of the old buildings along the way um, and basically why the canal was built as well you know it's it's fascinating fascinating history ah but i hear you say it can't all be good can it well no it wouldn't be me if i didn't have a few grumbles so um when I first started boating, um, it was my intention to come to the Schlangotten Canal and I was hoping to get here in, um, I don't know, maybe June, July last year. And every boater I spoke to said, no, don't do it, don't do it, it's really busy, it's really shallow, um, go at a different time of year. Well, yes, it is very, very busy, you know, it is the most touristy canal on the network, so it's bound to be quite busy. Um, that said, I didn't find it, I mean it was intrusive at times and yes, you know, my boat did get bashed by quite a few other boats, um, you know, novice holiday boaters. Um, so yeah, there is that, but it doesn't actually detract from, from the majesty of this canal. Uh, this canal is just fabulous, even though it can be incredibly busy. Possibly my main grumble is the lack of services there are along the canal. Um, there are quite a few water points and that's okay, but if you're wanting to dispose of your rubbish or uh, your Elson point or something, there just aren't that many places to do it. I really think the CRT should invest in a couple more places along the canal where boaters can get rid of their rubbish. The other thing about the canal is that it doesn't actually pass through very many towns or villages. It tends to skirt around the outside of them, um, which is fine. Um, I don't mind that, but if you want to do some shopping, it means that, you know, you have to walk, let's say it's a third of a mile into Renbury to go to the shop. It's uh, three quarters of a mile to get into Whitchurch to go to the shop. And OK, you know, at Ellesmere, you can take your boat right up the uh, the Ellesmere arm and, and more right outside a, a huge supermarket. That's fine. But I mean, even in Llangollen itself, you know, again, you've got a half, three quarters of a mile walk into the town to get any shopping. So, yeah, I would actually advise that you stock up quite well before you embark bark along this canal. Um, oh and one further thing, if you are from England uh, or Scotland for that matter um, and you're on medication you really must have enough medication to get you into Wales and out again um, because in Wales they don't accept uh, electronic prescriptions from anywhere other than Welsh doctor's surgeries. You know it would be awful to get to Llangollen and then suddenly realise that you need your medication and so you have to turn around and go uh, probably all the way back to Ellesmere. It has been pre precipitating for days now and we are fast approaching Hurlston Junction. Well as fast as you can approach anything in a narrow boat. Um, now I've got to say being on this canal three over three months has been absolutely brilliant and I've loved it um, and uh, oh here come the trees right
yeah it's been brilliant and I've loved it um, and I, I wouldn't say it's my favorite canal necessarily although it is right up there uh, but it is the only canal I've come across so far that I would actually want to live on maybe I will one day maybe I'll come back here and just you know but anyway there's a lot of cruising to be done between now and then so we'll have to see how that all goes anyway it's been great having you along on the Flangotten and um, hope you stay with me for the rest of my journeys take care now That is... Oh my god, that is just so incredible. <laughs> 